Hello everybody. Welcome back. This is chapter 9 and this is part 4. And in this part we're going to continue doing our calculations. But this time we're going to look at a formula that is going to allow us to calculate specific heat capacity. So we, we talked about heat being the exchange of thermal energy between systems and surroundings. And it occurs when there's a difference in temperature between the two. So temperature is, is not really heat, it's a measure of the thermal energy, okay? So, and I know that sounds like they should be the same thing, but temperature really just is telling us how hot something is, okay? And we're only looking at the difference or the change in the thermal energy when we do the temperature. Heat will flow from a high temperature to a low temperature. So it always goes downhill until both of the objects are at the same temperature. And we call that thermal equilibrium, okay, where they're equal in temperature both objects are. So the heat capacity is how much heat something is going to absorb. How much can it absorb? Okay, so when an, a system absorbs heat, we're going to see its temperature increase. And that's going to be directly proportional to how much heat is absorbed. So the increase in temperature is directly proportional to the amount of heat absorbed. So we can, we can use that relationship to figure out how much the energy is changing. And so we have to, though, since they're not the same number, we have to use a constant. And that constant is called the heat capacity, and it's C. And the units of C are going to be either joules per degree C or joules per K. And make sure you look and see which one that is, okay, because it's, it's very important. So our formula for heat capacity is the heat capacity times the change in temperature is going to give us what the thermal energy is. So the larger the heat capacity, the smaller the temperature rise will be, okay? So the heat capacity of an object depends on how much you have. It is usually measured by its mass. And so 200 grams of water requires twice as much to raise its temperature as 100 grams of water. Okay, so it's directly proportional. The heat capacity depends on also the type of material. Okay, some things are going to have a different heat capacity capacity like water and sand they have a very different heat capacity and so it takes a lot a lot more heat to raise the temperature of um, water the same amount as it would for sand okay so that's what the heat capacity is all about so we said it's proportional to the mass and then it's dependent also on what type of material so it's specific heat and each um, each type of mass has its own specific heat okay so this is not something you memorize this is something you have to either be given or you look it up on a table okay so the quantity of heat absorbed in joules is going to be determined if you know the mass the specific heat and so it's C sub s because it's specific and then the temperature change all right, and so our formula becomes Q, which is in joules, is equal to the mass of the object in grams times the specific heat in joules per gram degree C times delta T, which will be in degree C when we're using this particular formula. So Here's a chart of some specific heats that, um, that, that are kind of common. The metals, we use the metals a lot um, because a lot of times we're seeing what happens when they go in water or things like that. But water um, is 4.1 or 4.184 you might see, okay? That's joules per gram times degree C on the bottom. Um, glass, sand, notice sands is very, very low compared to water. Um, your metals are also very, very low compared to water. And so when we put them, when we put a piece of metal in water, that ch exchange of energy is often pretty big. So 
this is an intrinsic property, okay, this, the, the substance ability to absorb heat, okay, because it just depends on what type of material it is. The specific heat is how much it requires to raise the temperature of one gram of whatever that is, one degree C. That's why it's per gram times degree C. And so that's our units. The molar heat capacity is how much um, energy it takes to raise the temperature of one mole, one degree C. Okay, so you have specific heat capacity and then you have molar. So one's grams and one is moles. All right, so let's do a problem. So you find a penny. Now, I have, to, I have to give you the caveat of it's minted before 1982 because that's when pennies were actually made of copper. They're not anymore, pretty much. I think they might have a little thin layer on the outside to make them shiny, but they are not made of copper. Um, but you find it in the snow, so we know it's completely copper. And it wants to know how much heat is absorbed by the penny as it warms from the temperature of the snow which is a negative eight degrees C to the temperature of your body, which is 37 degrees C. And you can assume that the penny is pure copper and it has a mass of 3.10 grams. Now, when I take inventory for this, okay, so I've got snow is a negative 8.0 degrees C and I got my body is 37 degrees C and then the mass of the penny is 3.10 grams. What is it wanting me to do? It wants me to know what how much heat is absorbed so I know that's Q and we already talked about what I have to know in order to find Q is I need a mass in this case of the copper penny times the specific heat of copper, because that's what the penny is made of, times the delta T. All right, well, I can get the delta T, right? Because the delta T is going to be 37 degrees minus a negative 8 degrees, which is going to be a total of 45 degrees C. Okay, so that's going to be my delta T. I know what my mass is because that's 3.10 grams. So I need to know what that C sub S is. So I may have to go back and look at my chart. Okay, and copper, if you notice, is 0.385 joules over gram degrees C. So it is 0 0.385 joules over gram times degree C. Now once I've done that, I'm going to look and I'm going to make sure everything's in the right units. So I got grams, I got degree C, and I got joules. So I'm golden, right? So once I do that, then all I have to do is plug and play. So I just plug it into my handy dandy formula, my mass, which is 3.10 grams, times my C sub S, which is 0 0.385 joules, over gram times degree C times my delta T, which we said was 45.0 degrees C. All right, I'm going to check my units again. Grams, grams, degree C, degree C. So that's going to give me the answer in joules, which is a completely legit unit for um, the energy, right, by the penny, the heat. Okay, so then I do my calculation, um, I multiply my numbers together, and I'm going to get 53.7 joules. Kachung, all right, so that one wasn't too hard, was it? All you got to do is you got to look in, find those numbers in your word problem, and then put them over in your inventory and make sure that your units are right so that they're going to cancel and give you that unit that you want at the end, okay? So I've given you a couple of practice problems for this because heat capacity, you do need to know how to do this. And it and instead of just asking for heat capacity, some of these might ask for something else. 
um, if they might, I'm sorry, it's so the heat, okay, so we, we did Q on the first one. On this second one, I'm asking you to rearrange that formula to find the specific heat of whatever this um, thing is, right? And then in the for more practice, I'm actually, you're finding T sub F, okay? And so T sub F may be a little trickier, all right? But you need to um, figure that out because you're going to have another problem when we get to um, more thermal energy transfer between two objects that's going to be similar to this. So you need to figure out how to find that T sub F, the final temperature. All right, so now you should be able to calculate the specific heat and do the rearrangement of those formulas to calculate the other, uh, the other ways you can, can use that same um, heat formula.